Good evening, Lake Orion. Welcome to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Termina. Tonight, I want to honor longtime mentor, longtime friend, one of the very best in athletic training, my longtime friend and athletic trainer for 30 years, Tom Ford. T, also known as T Ford. He was one of the very best to ever do it. Um, in 2017, I had the honor to interview T Ford. Um, give it a look. Good evening. Welcome to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Taramina. Today, I have the honor of having a special guest with us today, Oakland University athletic trainer, Tom Ford. T, how you doing? Thanks for having me, Anthony. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to have you. <laughs> T, you were the athlete. You were the Oakland University athletic trainer from 1988 to 2017. You actually started your athletic training career in 1982. Yes. Um, you were also a member of the of several national athletic training organizations. The National Athletic Trainers Association from 1982 to 2017. The National Strength and Condition Association from 1988 to 2017. The Great Lakes Athletic Trainers Association and the Michigan Athletic Trainers Society, both from 1988 to 2017. You were born in Nashua, New Hampshire? Nashua. Nashua. Nashua, right. New Hampshire. It was. Yep. Um, where is that located, T? Southern part of New Hampshire. Nice. Uh, just over the border from Massachusetts. Nice. Yeah. You have a bachelor's degree from Ball State in physical education and athletic training. Yes. You have a master's degree from Arizona in phys ed, health slash athletic training and sports medicine, and you got that master's degree in 1982. Yes. You were also the head athletic, you were also an assistant athletic trainer for the Dallas Cowboys in 1982. Yes. Well, a very good friend of mine plays for the Dallas Cowboys these days. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Jeff Heath, okay. the Lake Orion alum. There you go. Mm-hmm. So there's, the Lake or there's the Dallas Cowboy connection there. Yes. <laughs> um, you were also were the head athletic trainer at Sabino High School. Yes. In 1981 through 1982, it's located in Tucson? Yes, it is. Right there with the University of Arizona. Uh, that was part of the deal, going out there to University of Arizona. I could also work in high school at the same time. Wow. So I was able to get more and more experience. That's amazing. Yeah. You also, after your career with the Cowboys, you went to Cypress Creek High School, which is located in Houston, Texas. Yes. You served as their head athletic trainer from 1982 to 1988. Um, what was that experience like? It was awesome. Um, you know, you've seen Friday Night Lights mm -hmm. and all, all the talk about Texas football. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is that and then some. Uh, very big time. Uh, we had a stadium. Uh, this is back in 82. Mm -hmm. We had an AstroTurf stadium mm -hmm. that seated 13,000 uh, spectators. Wow. So we, we had five football teams, mm -hmm. two freshmen, a sophomore, JV, and varsity football team. And that was pretty much the way it was with our basketballs mm -hmm. and baseball and so forth. So there was mm -hmm. a big emphasis put on uh, athletics down there. Wow. And football was the main mm -hmm. main one, so it was really, it was a good experience. Athletic trainers liked mm -hmm. the, uh, well, we liked the competition. We liked uh, the blood and guts and uh -huh. stuff like that. The physicality. And, yes, the uh, phys and so it was. It was an awesome experience. It was smash mouth football at its yeah. finest. There you go. <laughs> yes. Um, the, it brings back, it reminded me of something, the UMAC in Oklahoma, in Tulsa. Was it, was it, did that have that similar feeling to the U, to that UMAC in Tulsa? Yes, um, as a matter of fact, um, you know, the stadium was huge and the mm -hmm. Tulsa football and Oklahoma football is very similar. Yeah. Um, a couple years back they had the, uh, um, uh, NCAA basketball tournament down there oh, yeah. in Houston where they did the slam dunk uh -huh. contest and the three-point shooting contest 
was at uh, the Cypress um, uh, uh, Cy Fair School District's mm -hmm. gymnasium. Wow. So mm -hmm. that goes to show you mm -hmm. there was some money put into that yeah. and, and it was top notch to be able to host that. You had to be very proud seeing it there. And that was awesome, you know. I went, is that the place? And <laughs> and it was. Yeah, I was. Uh, I thought it would be closer what? because Cypress Creek is on the outskirts of uh, Houston. Uh -huh. It's on the northwest corner, and I uh, thought maybe something closer to downtown. Oh, wow! But uh, mm -hmm. they had it out there. I'm glad. Um, you've also worked for the United States hockey team, U.S. hockey. Team. Yeah, it was part of uh, mm -hmm. uh, part of the Olympic experience mm -hmm. that I had with. Uh, working at the Olympic Training Center in Marquette, mm -hmm. doing the, uh, and you're probably going to tell me all about <laughs> what I've done. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring it up. <laughs> okay. um, you worked with speed skaters during the Winter World Games in Bulgaria. Yes, yes mm -hmm. I did. That was all part of the experience, the Olympic experience. I worked at the uh, Sports Festival Games in uh, North Carolina, mm -hmm. very similar to having um, you know, the Olympics uh -huh. here in the United States, but it was the Northeast corner playing the Southwest, mm -hmm. everybody playing within the United States. So it was a mini Olympics just for athlete, athletes from a, from the United States. Mm -hmm. So it was, they had an opening ceremony, closing ceremony, everything that you would see at the Olympics, but it was all Americans there competing. Wow. And they're all looking mm -hmm. to move on. Mm -hmm. uh, that hockey experience there, working with them, they were looking for the next um, miracle team on ice. Oh, the wow. team that would, uh, um, because it was, obviously I loved it because mm -hmm. once again, the blood and the guts and yeah. stuff like that, uh -huh. possibility there. Mm -hmm. But the media was there. Right. Everybody was recruiting them. Mm -hmm. We had first round draft picks up off that team, Ooh. so it was it was a real good experience there. That is awesome. And part of that, those athletes are trying to move on, so isn't the coaches and the athletic trainers mm -hmm. will be evaluated at each step uh -huh. of the way. And I, and I passed the evaluation so I could go to Bulgaria. Wow, Yeah. that had to be a fun, fun, fun time going to Bulgaria. It was it was different, you know. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I'm a a boy from New Hampshire, mm -hmm. you know, not having that many opportunities. I thought it was a great opportunity uh, to be able to do that. I grew up in Nashua. Well, I was born in Nashua, mm -hmm. but I was raised in Bristol, mm -hmm. which is further up in the mountains. Which is I why was, you're a big Red Sox fan. Oh you know, yeah, and the Patriots fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's such a small community, and for me to g get out of there and be able to um, to do all the things I did with the Cowboys, the, mm -hmm. the USA hockey, and then going over to Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. I might not have had that chance if I wasn't an athletic trainer. That is awesome. And then 1988, you got the job at Oakland University working for then the Pioneers. Yes. Um, Oakland was either they had just gotten into the GLELAC, which is the greater, the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. Um, I want to talk to you about your um, your bond with Coach Campy because Coach Campy talks very, very highly about the bond he has with you. And um, you're always sitting during the games. You're sitting next to Coach Campy. What is that like during games? Really, I think he's got me there so I can put the chair underneath his but when he goes to sit down, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm there at first and foremost as an athletic trainer, mm -hmm. watching everything that's going on on, on the court, mm -hmm. making sure that if anyone's hurt, I can take care of quickly. So I'm, so I'm in the game and so forth. He can ask me what's wrong with so-and-so, is he all right, and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So I, I can relay that message sitting right next to him. The other thing, you see me with a clipboard in my mm -hmm. hand. Yes. I'm, I'm taking, uh, recording, uh, it's a shot chart ma mm -hmm. mainly, uh, where they take a shot and make it, I circle it, 
Uh, it's all, it's all paper and clipboard mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so forth, old school. Um, but I, that's one of the first things he'll ask for mm -hmm. at halftime to see where all the shots are being taken mm -hmm. by us, but by also the opposing team. Right. Well, I'm going to talk to you more. If we're going to take a commercial break, we'll be right back on History Now here on ONTV. Welcome back to History Now here on ONTV. I'm Anthony Termina. I'm here with my guest, Tom Ford. T, how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you about, now we're talking about your life at Oakland. Um, I want to talk to you about basically life in the training room. You were a, um, you were taking care of student athletes and at times managers. <laughs> I know oh, I've been yeah. to come in a few times. Yeah, and, um, you, and you basically, you were seen as, some people have seen you as like the, you heal people very, very, very in a very unique way. Um, so, but you always made life in the training room fun. You, oh, student athletes always looked forward to coming in every day. You know, they obviously didn't like getting hurt, but they always looked forward to coming in, seeing you. How did you make that experience so fun? I looked at each student athlete that came in there as my own son or daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt, because I had my own go off to college and, you know, I felt like they're, they're traveling thousands of miles. Some are coming from other countries mm -hmm. and so forth to Oakland University. They don't have parents anymore. Well, they do, but... But they're following. Yeah. When they're sick or injured, their job was to see the athletic trainer. Mm -hmm. And I made sure that they knew my cell number so they could reach out to me. Mm -hmm. And that's part of it. I, I, I tried to be a father to them, to be able to help them, um, so they would feel comfortable coming into the athletic training room. You know, and I think along the way, built up their trust mm -hmm. that they could go to me for anything and everything. You know, whether it was, it was an injury or a boyfriend, girlfriend issue mm -hmm. or something like that. They knew they could come to me and I would be able to help them, point them in the right direction if I didn't have the right answers. But I think as an athletic trainer, the, your student athletes need to ha trust you in everything you do. Mm -hmm. You also were a professor at the university. You taught a class. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. uh, that started uh, a few years back, quite a few now, I think. Um, and now I teach it, or I was teaching it, in the fall, winter, and in the summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite, a, quite a few people would get in there, anywhere between 40 and 50 students. Wow. It started off as uh, a small mm -hmm. beginning athletic training class, more or less to introduce uh, the people that were going in exercise science mm -hmm. or in physical therapy about what an athletic trainer does. And mm -hmm. so they were, they were learning, mm -hmm. you know, so they could take, so they would be able to incorporate an athletic trainer mm -hmm. in a PT clinic or work with them at a high school if they were going to be a coach. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of students actually took the class because of who their professor was. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it wasn't because I was easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talked about this a little bit. Um, the bonds with student athletes, coaches, managers, and students. We know we talked about this a little bit, but what are those bonds like with with student athletes and coaches and managers and just students in general? It is amazing. Um, with my new uh, sickness now, mm -hmm. uh, the the outpouring of love and support that I'm getting from all the way back to the Division Two days, mm -hmm. those student athletes reaching out to me and and so forth. It, it's just amazing that they do that. But it wasn't wasn't because of my sickness right now. Right. Um, the, I, we have a number of them. Obviously, I'm there 30 years. Mm -hmm. Some of their kids have gone on to college right now. Mm -hmm. We have some of them at Oakland. Some of our former athletes now have their sons and daughters going to school at Oakland. So mm -hmm. it's the second generation that I'm working with. And so, um, you know, once again, it's a trust thing. Um, or, or they would, those, these former athletes, uh, now that are parents, mm -hmm. would call me first before going to a doctor. Hey, T, 
what should I do? They got this and this and this. Mm -hmm. It's not only them. They might have ran a marathon, but now I'm answering questions about their son and daughter. That's awesome. Um, obviously, bonds was obviously you and I have a a great bond that goes back to when I first started. Um, I was very uncomfortable running in my first year. Um, you, along with Mark Vick and the players, took me in as one of your own. Um, we always have a, I would call it a, a, a great, like, I always look forward to coming into the training room. And, you know, just whether, like, you're in after class or just saying, hi, T, how you doing? Great. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, and just some of the things that we did, um, you and I, uh, just so much chemistry between you and I in terms of the manager athletic trainer bond. And I thank you for that. Oh, no problem. Um, I would not I have been able you. to. I would not have been able to um, graduate my five and a half years without getting to know you, without, um, you know, you helped me along the way, and um, I thank you for that. Oh, and, you're um, welcome. You know. You I, made my life easier, too. Thank you, T. Um, I wanted to go back and talk about um, the, you've made several NCAA tournament appearances. <laughs> You've made um, four NCAA Division II tournament appearances with, back when the Pioneers, before they became the Golden Grizzlies, and I'll, get, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Is that just men's basketball? Uh, yes. We and remember, then, back oh, in yeah. Division II, I was the only one. Oh. So I was... So you were going everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. So it wasn't I'd have men, men's soccer. Then I'd travel with men's and women's basketball. Mm -hmm. And then for a little bit, I'd go with swimming to their championships, oh. their national championships, and then go to baseball. Wow. So it was year round. So it was year round. Yeah. Then you went with men's basketball, women's soccer, um, men's and women's golf. I mean, you just did it all. All the, all the sports I've been involved with. You did it yeah. all. Um, obviously, since I've known you from basketball, you're a two-time Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Champ Conference Champion, regular season champion, a three-time Midcon slash Summit Champion, and then you're a Horizon League Champion. That's amazing, T. I don't think of it as myself. I think of well, it more as the team. Yeah. You know, I've, I helped them out, but it, I was there along for the ride, mm -hmm. and it was fun. Um, I get words from from other OU alumni about UT, the words I get, four of them, spirited, loving, fun, creative. <laughs> you were always creative. You always, um, you always made life fun. And um, I want to talk to you about your family, your wife, your wife, Kathy, and especially one of my favorites after every game, every home game, is you spend a lot of time with your granddaughter, Elena. Eliana, yeah. Eliana, Eliana. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's, let's back up a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, you talk about your, the student athletes. Mm -hmm. I never valued one over the other. Right. You know, we have our superstars, but we'd also have those that didn't get in the game, mm -hmm. maybe a walk on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I try to treat them all equally. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you were the guy that made the winning shot or you're the manager or the person that's sitting on the bench. I try to teach, I try to take care of everyone equally. And that's what I'm seeing the most. And a lot of times um, I'm not seeing athletic trainers mm -hmm. doing that. And, right. and I think that that would be my message to athletic trainers. Treat everybody equally because you don't know who's going to be there in the long run. Right now, uh, with this disease, and I don't want to keep on going to it, but some of those people that didn't play in the game as much are in my corner, mm -hmm. pushing me, uh, trying to build up everything, starting the GoFundMe page, mm -hmm. everything like that. And it's some of those that didn't get on the court or on the field. So treating everybody equally is the number one thing. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to my family because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Um, and especially my wife, Kathy. She's the one that's, she, I, I describe her as my rock, mm -hmm. uh, and she is. Um, there have been times 
um, at, you know, at Oakland that weren't the best. Mm -hmm. And uh, she got me through that. Mm -hmm. um, but in, never was there a time at Oakland that I felt like I had to go to work. I always got to go to work. Mm -hmm. I, I had that opportunity to, to be able to work with student athletes. And that was, that was always the thing that drove me to get in there to work is because they needed me mm -hmm. or I, I thought they needed me and then, then I'd go. But uh, Kathy was able to raise our three children, mm -hmm. uh, Tommy, Travis, and, uh, and Carrie Ann. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we have a granddaughter, yeah. Eliana now. Um, but yes, she was always there. She was there supporting us. Mm -hmm. The kids grew up at Oakland. Mm -hmm. uh, the two boys were ball boys with the Pistons. Wow. Um, you know, they had a lot of opportunities um, with a dad that was working at Oakland University. That you know, they, they got to see a lot of games, uh, got to grow up with the, uh, um, the athletes there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all three of them had their favorites and they, they were, the, kid, the athletes, uh, student athletes loved them being around and so forth. So it was a great experience for them, or at least I thought it was a great experience. Mm. They ended up playing sports in high school mm -hmm. and so forth. So, um, I, and I think that was a wholesome environment for them to grow up in that uh, is awesome. along the way. That is awesome, T. Um, that is just wow. Wow, 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 yeah. that's all I can say. Um, when we come back to History Now, we're gonna talk to you, we're gonna talk to you, T, about your next chapter, which is, you know, the, the, the challenge that you're dealing with that we all are helping you overcome. Um, we're gonna talk about that, but also we're gonna bring up what, what, how does your legacy here on History Now, here on ONTV. Welcome back to History Now here on ONTV. I'm Anthony Tiramina, and I'm here with my guest, Tom Ford. T, how you doing again? Great. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you about the next chapter. Um, in 2017, you were diagnosed with ALS. Um, uh, it's, it's tough, it's tough because, um, and you had to recently step down as athletic trainer. On overcoming this disease, this challenge. Um, talk to me about your um, experiences with this. Well, it's probably the biggest slap in the face that I ever had. Mm -hmm. um, there's never an opportune time to have a disease. Right. And for us as a family, this definitely was not the right time for us. Because mm -hmm. we're planning on retiring mm -hmm. and all that stuff going on. And then all of a sudden this comes into play. You know, throughout the year, I was get, getting tired a lot more. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm thinking it's me traveling with women's right. soccer, going men's basketball. You know, well, that's a lot. For me, I've never had so much time off. You mm -hmm. know, I, I was lucky to have a day off. I worked almost seven days a week, you know, traveling and mm -hmm. so forth. Yep. And my body was tired. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking that. It is, you know, I'm 58 or I was 58 at the time, mm -hmm. and I was tired because I was doing the job of a 28-year-old kid, mm -hmm. you know? So um, in December, uh, well, back in October, I had trouble breathing going and running out on the field because, you know, that's part of my job to right. get one of the student athletes, soccer player off, and I was breathing hard, and I went, holy cow, what's going on? So November was a busy month again, and, yep. and no traveling, going to Alaska and so forth. And then uh, early so I could get in to see the doc doctor was in uh, December. We started off with therapy because my back and my mm -hmm. neck hurt, and I was having trouble breathing. Um, had MRIs, mm -hmm. CT scans, went off to see a cardiologist, right. said my heart was good but your lungs or breathing was bad. So I went to a pulmonologist, ran tests. They sent me to a neurologist who then referred me to specialists at Henry Ford um, where they deal with ALS. 
uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, it's not something that anybody wants. Right. The unfortunate thing is I had to break that news to my wife on her birthday. So that was, that was the worst thing I ever had to do. Um, it, but since then, we've been seeing a lot of people at Henry Ford to mm -hmm. get us through there. Uh, they have a number of uh, specialists that work mm -hmm. with us. Um, feel real confident in that. Um, they t because mm -hmm. I lost about 20 pounds, they told me I needed to eat. Mm -hmm. um, they put me on some medicine mm -hmm. that's been around only about 22 years. Mm -hmm. They haven't found anything else. Right. In uh, August, uh, hopefully there will be another uh, medicine here that the FDA approved. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem with that, there's a price tag with right. that, and that's 146000 dollars a year so I'm hoping that insurance helps right. with this but more and more I'm looking at this ALS is not something that's incurable um, there are about 6,000 people that come down with this disease every year um, and if the United States had people 6,000 people being put in prison they would try to figure out how to get them out of there. And more or less, when you have ALS, you're imprisoned, you're a prisoner in your own body after a while, after everything goes, you're, you're just there. Um, so it's, it's not incurable. You know, we have hope that it's not incurable, but it's one of those that is underfunded. And mm -hmm. my next chapter in life, I always wondered what I was going to do, you know, here is a person that worked 24 7. What am I going to do if I had a weekend? What am I going to have when I have a week off? Now, my, now I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to spread the word of ALS, make sure people are aware of it, because in my situation, it's not genetic. 90% of the people can have that. You know, only 10% is genetic related. So anybody out there could end up with this disease. And if I can help uh, the next person not get this, um, um, that's my job in life right now. How do you want people to remember you, T? Well, I hope they remember me as the person that they could go to with anything. You know, they, they feel that they were comfortable with, that they trusted, and they knew I had their back at any time. Thank you very, very much. You're Steve. welcome. It's Thank my you. honor. Thank you. It's my honor to have you as a guest. Thank you so very, mm -hmm. very much for coming out here, T. It means the world to me that you came out. And um, I'm always going to be grateful to have you in my life. And I'm so thankful to know your wife, your kids, and especially you and the Oakland University basketball family. Thank you again. Thank you. Love you. Always. Nine. Eight. Eight. Are you or someone you know having thoughts of suicide or experiencing a mental health or substance abuse crisis? 988 connects you to compassionate, confidential support for free. 988! 988 is the new three-digit dialing code for the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. For years, the Lifeline, formerly known as the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, has answered tens of millions of calls and helped people overcome mental health-related distress. 988 is the same trusted resource. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and get you additional help if needed. There is hope. The Lifeline works. You are not alone in crisis. Just call, text, or chat 988. 988! Knowing how to identify signs of crisis in others and help connect them to resources like the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is an important way to prevent suicide in Lake Orion. For information about free suicide prevention trainings offered in our community, please visit the North Oakland Community Coalition at nocmi.org. Always love watching that interview. It um one of my more emotional ones, one of my more favorite ones.
you know, anytime you interview with a friend, someone you love, admire, care for, um, it's always, it's, it's that much more special. Um, after our interview in 2017, T continued to support our beloved Golden Grizzlies. He would attend multiple games, not just basketball, not just, but soccer, volleyball. We'd have, there'd be T Ford nights, T Ford events. He would tweet out support. He kept in touch with as many people as possible, especially on Twitter, especially, you know, especially, you know, he will, he, he just kept in touch with so many of us, including myself. Um, in 2020, T was honored with the Holly L. Lepley Hall of Honor, which is basically the Oakland University Athletic Hall of Fame. No man, in my opinion, deserves this more than T. He, when you talk about Oakland University, when you talk about the love, the dedication, the, the impact that he had made on, on lives, not just, not just in athletics, but T was a former professor. T was also a, was a teacher. He was a mentor. And his, his legacy will impact, will go further than just Oakland University student athletes. You have managers, you have other athletic trainers, not just in the, not just at Oakland, but throughout the Summit League, the Horizon League, um, other schools like Michigan State, Michigan. T was known in, in those areas. And um, his impact in many ways, just he did so much. And he, in many ways, even now, he continues to be a mentor he was still teaching all of us about what ALS was, um, him and his wife, Kathy. Um, they taught us about ALS and understanding what it, what it is, often ending tweets with the hashtag, every second counts, or T Forge Strong. T still continued to be a mentor for all of us. He continued to teach, to teach us what ALS is and just staying positive, just being that positive influence that he continued to be when he was athletic training and still doing it even then. Oakland changed their Black and Gold Spirit Award to the Tom Ford Black and Gold Spirit Award, which, which honors the most spirited athletes and teams at Oakland University. That's basically the, the most spirited award. And... Um, can't ask for, as I said, I can't ask for a better person to honor than Tom Ford when it comes to awards. The athletic training room at Oakland University is now named in his honor, and deservingly so. And just really, no one deserves it more. Um, his name is enshrined forever on the arena court. Um, right next to the seat where he, where he sat. And when we were, when Lake Orion was there in December for a basketball game, for, I, I saw that and I was, I just went on my knees and kissed it. it I mean, that's how much T meant, means to me. And um, it's very special. Um, Oakland also created the Tom Ford Athletic Training Endowment in his honor which all proceeds will go to promote athletic medicine. And that will be there until the annals of time. Um, in July 20th, 2023, T left us. And um, sorry, it's hard. Um, try not to cry in front of it. It's, it's hard not to. Um, but it's, it was a tough day to hear, um, but T would not have wanted us to cry when he said to celebrate who he is as a person and to honor his life. His legacy, we can talk about athletic trainer, teacher, professor, mentor, he just impacted so many lives. 
He was always helping others. He always made you smile. You would go into the office, you would go into his athletic training office. Hey, how are you doing? T's favorite line, great. It's one of his favorites. I mean, uh, uh, if you didn't smile out of that, eh, I don't know. It, it, uh, he always made you smile. Um, Neil Rohl, the Oakland University announcer, would, would say, if there was a Mount Rushmore of Oakland, Tom Ford's name would be, his face would be on it. And rightfully so. The amount of, of people he impacted in his life and continues to this day is is amazing and um, also his wife Kathy allowing us to share him or allowing him to share allowing allowing her allowing to share us to share him Kathy Kathy's an amazing woman and um, I've had the honor to meet her several times um, just an amazing person um, and you could tell when T and Kathy were together um, they always made each other smile it was it was fun seeing them together one of my favorite memories with them both was um, I was out miniature golfing with my friends and um, I would see T and um, Kathy watching and it was like aunt like T, what are you doing? What are you doing? This was one of my favorite Caseville moments. Um, not knowing that T had um, had had friends up in Caseville that they had um, that they that the friends had a home, and T and Kathy would often go over there. And um, one of the things I told Kathy at the viewing was always watch the sunset because you know T is there. And um, I asked her, I. I said to her, basically, you know he's there. And um, so I'm pretty sure she'll show the next time she goes to Caseville, she'll look at that sunset and have a smile on her face. Um, personal stories, basically the antagonistic manager and the voice of reason athletic trainer. I was seen as the instigative, antagonistic, loved picking on people. Um, and he was always the voice of reason athletic trainer. Um, I would always demand respect and he was like, aunt? No, that's not how you do it. You earn respect. It was, it was a very, very, almost a comedy relationship but it's, those are the moments that you value forever. Um, I was thrown, he threw me in the swim X. I'm the only manager he's ever taken to the hospital. Two stitches on my finger. Um, I remember being in a lot of pain and T just keeping me calm, keeping me positive through all of it. Um, he didn't have to do that, but he did. And um, that meant so much to me, having him there, having being there for me, um, helping me overcome my fear of ladders. Um, we were when we were when we won our two championships. Um, one of the things that I was most afraid about was going on ladders, and um, so because of that fear of ladders, I ended up cutting my finger rather than cutting the net, and um, it was not it, it was bleeding so much. Um, but he took me to the hospital. I had two stitches on my finger, and um, he was there with me throughout. And um, I will always be thankful to T for just being there with me through that time. There were the wake-up calls, especially when I was on the road. I would do a lot of wake-up calls. Um, I would also prank call T a couple times. I had the, the, the um, number lists in the hotel um, so I would often call his room and prank. Um, the one of my favorite ones was um, basically saying, I'm your conscience. He goes, hello, conscience. It was so, so funny. It was like, I didn't know what to say, but I was like, hmm. 
it was just, you know, it was fantastic. Hilarious, but, I mean, anything to make a smile and vice versa. We had Casey the Kangaroo, Don the Mastodon, or as I call it, Don the Elephant. Life in the Training Room. Um, I wrote a short story about life in the training room, basically a comedy of basically with T as the main character. Um, it was just some of the most comical, crazy things that um, I would put in there. Um, tried to include as much of the 2011 team as possible. It was just hilarious. Um, basically, T is the main character and opposing mascots as the major villains. It was just hilarious. There was the Wizard of Oz flying monkeys. Um, he, what was unique about that was we talked about the Wizard of Oz flying monkeys in the song during that, during that, the, um, so anytime I would um, get the water coolers and I would fill up the waters and just bring it out, T would often play that song. It was just hilarious. Um, or I would say to T, sing that song. <laughs> it was just hilarious. Um, tying the ties before basketball games. Um, one thing I don't know doing, I don't do well is tying ties. And um, so it was tradition that um, I asked T to help me tie my ties. And um, he would always tie my ties before basketball games. Sometimes Coach Tungate would do it. Sometimes um, one of the other coaches would do it. But mostly, it was mostly T. Um, and I would remember those. Um, he always did it just right. Um, it was one of those, um, one of those things where I just, I just went to T and, you know, when he would get done taping the, taping the guys and, um, he would tie my ties for me. It was either, mostly it was before, but it was also after as well. So I always remember the moments he would tie my ties for basketball games. One of my favorite friendships that I have is a manager from... From, from Oral Roberts. Um, so how this worked out was uh, we were in Tulsa for the Mid-Continent Tournament. This was pre-Summit League. And um, so the manager left his number on the water cooler. And um, T came up to me and said, you should get to know him. You, um, I think you would, do, you would do really, really well getting to know him. And um, I said, OK. Um, should, might as well. So what I didn't know was he took the, he took his phone number from the water cooler and kept it for a year. So after our championship game in the MidCon championship, um, I reached out to the, to, to the Oral Roberts manager, said good game, was being a good sport. And, um, he appreciated that and we quickly became friends. And, um, a year later, uh, T would I would be in T's office and he would show me that he kept the number. I'm like, what the heck were you doing? So, I mean, he gave me his number, of course, before T showed me the before T showed me the 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 paper. But the fact is that T was responsible for my friendship with the manager at Oral Roberts and. Um, it is a friendship that continues to this day. Um, when he when he left us, I um, he was one of the guys that I um, I talked to in terms of um, you know just everything he did, what his legacy is, um, you know, wondering if he if he remembered him, and um, he said that he did. Um, he was the guy, and you know, it it's just. Just a special, I mean, I credit T for that so much. Thank you, T. He was just the guy to pick on, knowing that he would do it back. As I made mention, if both of us were not smiling, we failed our jobs. And it was one of those moments where, you know, if he was stressed, I would, I would usually, like, back off and just, you know, not pick on him as much, and then vice versa. If anything was 
he just was that positive support, that positive, he, he, he was, I can't say any, can't say anything negative about T. He was just amazing. Just, <sighs> sorry. T, I love you. God bless you. God bless your wonderful family. Our athletics at Oakland, our basketball team, our wonderful university. It's not goodbye. It's see you in a little while, my friend. Rest easy. Keep watching over all of us. Thank you for everything you did in this life. Look forward to seeing you in the next life. I love you. And I always will.